So regardless where you are in your collecting journey, you probably can remember that first watch, that watch that started it all and got you obsessed with the world of watch collecting. But if you're new, you might be thinking, where do I begin and what is the perfect watch to start with? Well, that is the hope of this video is to aim to pick out some of the definitive starter watches to begin your collection with. So how this is going to work, we're gonna be looking at mostly mechanical watches with some exceptions, uh, because there are some really good quartz options and I think it falls in a range where it might make sense, but I'm gonna lean into mechanical because I think when you're talking about being a part of the watch collecting type of community, it seems a lot of that is mostly gravitating towards mechanical watches, but of course, not always the case. Also looking at mostly attainable watches here, obviously because these are going to be your first watch, you're probably, despite some people still doing it, not gonna spend over a thousand dollars on your first watch when you're first starting to get a taste of this world. And also I have this broken down into different categories or different types of buckets so that we can look at three to four in each category. So say something like casual attire, you want something for more the office or formal environments, you have an active lifestyle, things like this, so that we can try to break this down even further into different buckets. I will say this also, I like talking about this whole idea of this entry level, first watch, because I remember what it was like owning my first mechanical watch and how exciting it was. When you look at the world, it's so much about these disposable things and technology. When you can look at something like a watch that's just simply does something so rudimentary, but it has build quality and it's able to transcend the very idea that it's made to measure, which is time. And one final thing before we jump into this video, if you're new to watches as well, you wanna understand a little bit more about mechanical watchmaking and also different types of movements, courts, spring drives, uh, different levels of finishing techniques, what are the different movement providers, and you're just a little unaware of what's going on there, I'd recommend our comprehensive article looking at all of that on the subject matter. I think it's one of the best articles we put together. Mark did a wonderful Wonderful job on that. I'll link to that in the description down below. So for our first category here, we have the casual category. So my thought is this is somebody that wants not something that is going to be out of place on both ends. They don't necessarily wear a suit all the time, but they also are not requiring the most extreme of specifications, but just want something that is versatile and can be worn pretty much year around in a lot of different circumstances. For first watch in this category, we have the Seiko 5 sports model, the SRPD 5.1. Now this is just one of many different variations within this model family. These were watches that had some mixed reactions when they were first unveiled because they they do resemble much of what the SKX was in some ways, but in other ways they don't. The case, very much similar to that. So when you're talking about that SKX009, similar in that regard. But then you have 100 meters of water resistance, so it's not really the professional specced out watch. But if you just understand what this watch is and is trying to represent, well done, but also incredibly versatile, I think you begin to appreciate it for being a definitive watch under $300. And that goes for all the Seiko 5 sports watches and Seiko 5 watches. You could just basically lump all of them in to this category. There's really not one to pick out. Uh, most of them are going to come in with a 42 and a half millimeter case, but you do have other variations that you could go for. Uh, 46 millimeters on that lug to lug. So all of them wear a bit smaller than what their case size might indicate when you look at that diameter measurement. 100 meters of water resistance for our series of movements on the inside. Mineral crystals, loom is fantastic. And just simply workhorse watches uh, that you can wear time and time again and are going to last. Now for our next watch here, we have the Swatch with the System 51. So for those not aware of the history of watchmaking in the 1980s, the Swatch watch really was the watch that revolutionized the Swiss watch industry and allowed it to recover after being completely decimated by the quartz crisis and the onslaught of Japanese watches that were being produced in mass number and volume compared to the mechanical timepieces that dominated uh, just a decade earlier. Swatch was a marvel in terms of its cultural relevance, but also with allowing it to design something that was so very much about the 80s. Now looking at the System 51, this is embodying that original type of reputation with a mechanical movement on the inside, the Swatch System 51 movement uh, made of 51 components, hence the name 51. Also coming acrylic crystal, wide variety of different case options, as well as dial colors. 
They're a tad more eccentric and a tad might be a little bit of an understatement here, but fully machine built, automatic, not going to be serviceable movement. So that is important to consider. These are kind of more just throwaway fun watches. You enjoy your time with them and then you say sayonara, I'm done with you. But if that is your first watch. I think this is where you can experiment with something like this. Just know what you're getting into. If you like the design, you want something more playful, you're that type of individual, you'll know if these watches are for you or not for you. Uh, but a brand and a watch to certainly just get consumed with a little bit, understand a bit more about. And we we're talking about casual attire, being able to to just have some fun with it, uh, Swatch certainly comes to mind. Now for our next watch here, we have the Tissot PRX. Now the Tissot was a brand that was the first Swiss watch that I ever owned. So I have tremendous just admiration and I have this nostalgic connection to Tissot and just being a part of my journey. And I know for so many people, it's also been a part of their journey into the world of just entering into Swiss watchmaking for the first time. And the PRX in the last year, it's crazy, it's only been out for a year. Uh, 2021, it was released. The mechanical option in the summer of 2021 uh, we're talking about around you know a year time, it's become this just probably the most popular mechanical watch or the newest popular mechanical watch under $1,000. And I would say probably one of the best releases of a mechanical watch under $1,000 in the past decade. It's just been that well received and for good reason. It's no nonsense. It has filled the void for so many people and wanting something that is more of that integrated style that also doesn't cut corners. The bracelet, the finishing on the dial, the movement, everything is exceptional. It's all really well done for the price range around $600. It's crazy versatile, 100 meters of water resistance, different dial colors to choose from. And then also having some heritage in the side of this watch was produced as a late 1970s C-Star model. I was actually at Tissot headquarters and saw that original model uh, from that late 1970s reference. And to see the direct connection to this new model, it's just have all that come together in one package. There's no surprise that this watch has just taken off. And I would say for anybody in 2022 looking for just kind of a do-it-all style watch in that casual attire type of environment, Tissot PRX, certainly one to consider. And for our final casual watch, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field. And I'm just keep it open to the Hamilton Khaki Field collection because there's so many to choose from. You have the mechanical options uh, that are hand wound. Then you have the automatic versions, 100 meters of water resistance, a little bit different in the design style, different case materials, different variations to choose from with aviation inspiration. You have the Navy Scubas that will start shifting a little bit over, but I'm really talking more about the field watch DNA of the, uh, the khakis. So the mechanical, maybe the autos, that is the core of what I think Hamilton does so well. The history is there, producing watches for the Allied Forces during World War II, a US brand until 1969 when they changed production over to uh, Switzerland. And then also talking about this cultural relevance, especially in the United States, Hamilton is a brand that just springs to mind immediately, their connection to film, uh, even way back in the day, and also now looking at Christopher Nolan films, Men in Black, and also being in games like Far Cry, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but these are watches that, despite all of that affiliation, the history, if you look at the package from even a modern context, they're still simply phenomenal. I will never get tired of mentioning the Hamilton Gacky Field just because I think it's such a solid watch for the money. $500, Swiss movement on the inside, 80 hour power reserve, history to go along with it. If you want a field watch, I'm sorry, Hamilton is just simply hard to beat. And honestly, probably isn't beat by anybody for value for dollar if you are looking in that direction. And like this style of no nonsense field oriented watch. For our next category, we have office or formal attire. So this is somebody that is in a professional environment. They want something that they can wear to the office every single day for their job and just want to come off as a seasoned individual and just presented in a solid manner. So that's that type of individual and what I'm looking at here for this bucket. And to begin here, uh oh, I know some of you are thinking, he's not gonna say it, he's not gonna say it, he's not gonna mention this brand again, he's not gonna mention this watch again, but I am. And it's the Orient Bambino. So the Bambino, despite it becoming essentially a meme at this point, always being mentioned as this definitive point of value, I still think it just, when talking about the gateway drugs of watch collecting in the last decade, the Bambino has to be there. Orient from a value perspective, very hard to beat. They have raised their prices, but even with that being the case, I still think they present something really special. The watch that I have on my wrist is actually the Bambino. This is the new 38 I've been test driving a little bit more lately, at least at the time of recording this video, it just had come out in the last uh, few weeks. 
it's just a phenomenal watch. This one answers some of the questions of the previous iterations. You had many different generations, versions at 40 and a half millimeters that you could get lost in. But if you want something a little bit smaller, go for the 38. F6724 movement on the inside, going to be running usually better than that range of deviation that is going to be quoted around plus or minus 25 to 30 seconds a day. I find these running closer to sometimes in the single digits when testing hundreds of these at this point. Uh, Orient is just a great brand. And if you want something that is just gonna be no nonsense, maybe it's not the most original looking design. The Bambino, I think, just pulls from a lot of different places and just tries to deliver something in a really simple, affordable package. They do that well. Uh, but if you want something like that, that's just to get started with your collecting journey and just get a taste of traditional watchmaking, I think the Bambino certainly has to be on the list. And that's why it's simply become one of the most beloved affordable watches of probably the last decade. So next we have the Timex Marlin Auto. So when the mechanical hand winding option was brought forth in 2017 by Timex, that was the changing of the guard in terms of reputation and also just for the brand, it seemed like from a product side, what they were gonna make their primary focus. It seemed like they were shifting to more heritage models as well as having a focus on automatics or mechanical options. So this is the automatic version rather than the hand winding version of that original Marlin that was a reissue from the 1960s. It expanded out the case, which I think it makes it a little bit more versatile for a wide range of wrists out there. 40 millimeters in size, 47.9 millimeters in lug to lug. So going to wear pretty true to that size. It's not a watch that is going to be built as well as the previously mentioned version, uh, looking at the Bambino as well as the watch I'm going to mention after it, but still well done, no nonsense, Miyota powered movement on the inside. Sure, you're gonna hear that rotor just rotate like crazy if you move your hand side to side, but that's part of the charm in knowing that you have a mechanical watch on your wrist. For our next watch here, we have the Seiko Cocktail Time family. So we mentioned the Marlin, we mentioned the Bambino, and unlike the Bambino, that again, I mentioned was a little bit more about just playing it safe from a design perspective, being a bit more inspired. The cocktail time is very different in that regard because it stands on its own. It has a design style. When you look at even the language around the family, the cocktail time family, uh, the imagery associated with that to resemble different uh, cocktails with their different dial colors, all of that I think comes together in a cohesive manner to allow these watches to stand on their own. Under $500, wide variety of dial colors to choose from. And when you think about where can a watch in this price range differentiate itself, uh, you get to understand that it's not the movement because so many third-party options are chosen, or in Seiko's case, many of the ubiquitous options that they throw in many of their watches. So how do they separate? It's with the dial. And the dial of the cocktail time is among the best in the price range. Under $500, it's simply a phenomenal looking watch. No question about it. It's a watch that I would feel comfortable recommending to anybody that was looking for their first dress watch. And under $500, it sets the standard. Sure, it's a little bit larger than maybe what some people would like. It has this more bubbled off case side that does allow it to wear a little bit thicker than maybe some will want, but no question, looks, finish, it is everything that you're going to want in a watch of this price category. So now for this next category, this is looking at a category I will refer to as the hipster category. So this is not going to be as weighted like I do in the past on micro brands because micro brands and definitive just don't seem to be ideas that gel or mesh perfectly together. Uh, I wanna go for things that are maybe a little bit more out there from major brands or brands that are commonly known just because we're talking about definitive and where to begin. I usually wouldn't recommend a micro brand. I think that's probably better suited for somebody that starts to have a better idea of what they like to collect. Uh, specifically because of the brand equity associated with some of those brands and having the ability to sell your way out of a brand is sometimes valuable so you know that there's a market that exists for that product. So to begin here, we have the Vostok Amphibia. Now, I think some of the Vostok models are absolutely hideous. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. Like the Scuba Dude, I, it's not for me. It's just not what, it's something I would like. But this model I think is pretty cool. And I think Vostok, in terms of what they're producing with the Amphibia, 
it is a pretty impressive watch for what it is. It's under $100 for some of these watches. This specific reference that we're showcasing here is the 12512. It's a watch that I really think looks pretty cool for Vostok standards. But even if you're somebody that doesn't like the look of Vostok watches, from an engineering perspective, they are pretty novel in what they've been able to accomplish for the price range. These are manufactured movements, 200 meters of water resistance with a novel case back design that allows a pressure tight seal that will actually get tighter as the watch goes deeper underwater. So it actually uses the pressure, the PSI on the case to allow the seal on that gasket to be even tighter when that compression is taking place. So pretty interesting way of going about this. Acrylic crystal, the friction fit bezel, yeah, it's not gonna feel like a premium example of anything you're going to find, maybe even from some of the other watches on this list. Uh, but if you wanna get down and dirty, you want a watch that just really gets into mechanical watchmaking at the entry level tier, uh, the Vostok is, uh, you know, it's a cult classic and so many people do enjoy the watches. The next watch here we have is the Timex Q. And the Timex Q fuses some of the elements of the Marlin with those heritage retro style elements and infuses it into a 1970s design with some sportier flair with its uh, bezel action and its bracelet. So this is a bracelet that has this mesh style that sure might pull some hair, so uh, no waxing needed, but it's not that extreme. I'm only partially being uh, a little facetious with that, but it's a cool watch. I remember when it was released, a lot of buzz, it sold out immediately. And since then, we've seen a wide variety of different iterations. It, it's fun, it's quirky, it's very 1970s in terms of its case and profile, under $200. The handset, the dial design, the typography, the typeface, the bracelet, as well as the hatch on the back for the battery. It's so retro in terms of its approach, and I think is a good representation of something that's funky that you could go for as your first watch if you wanted something that was very much in alignment with these ideas. So next up we have the Casio A168. So whether we're talking about the bare bones example for $25 or we're talking about the WG version, I don't think it matters. This is a watch when it's paired with the right individual, it just simply works. It's not gonna be for everybody, but if you're trying to go for a watch of this design style, I'm sorry, this watch just does not have an equal. The WG is one that it just, I described it as the ultimate flex watch for $50. Now that was at the time, uh, you know, over the summer. So I don't know if the costs are now because those things do fluctuate a little bit. Get, you know, not like it's gonna go crazy up in price, but it does fluctuate depending on availability. But very similar to how the Casio calculator watch has some charm and it's just not able to be equaled. These are watches that come to mind without having the same level of nerdiness associated. I think these watches are incredibly wearable. They do the job and they have a coolness factor to them. When they're pulled off, it's just a tip of the cap. That's all you have to say. So now for this final category, we have the active category. This is for those that really push their body to the limit. They are gonna swim, they're gonna hike, they're gonna rock climb, they're gonna do all different types of things. So they wanna watch that can match that lifestyle. And I think the obvious thing here is to look at the Casio G-Shock to begin. Now the Casio G-Shock was a gateway for pretty much millions of people. They've sold 100 million, I think, G-Shocks in the cycle of its life. Uh, since the 1980s. It was produced to withstand a fall of 10 meters, 100 meters of water resistance, and the whole design of the watch itself was to be robust and be able to take a beating. We've thrown these things out of helicopters on this channel, which I can link to down below. And the fact that they were able to withstand some of those falls well beyond what was the quoted uh, threshold for what they could withstand, I think is all you need to know about the Casio G-Shock. The DW5600, the classic designs, you can go for the Mudmasters with a little bit larger cases. The Casioks are of course now beloved with that analog digital display. These are watches, just get lost, have some fun. It's a great gateway for those that just want something that's robust and will just always work. So the next watch we have here is the Alpinist family of watches. So this watch family descends from a Seiko Laurel model from the 1959. But when you think of the modern Seiko Alpinist, you think of probably the JDM model, the Saab 017. And also associated with this family of watches is going to be the robust over manufacturing type of nature that they have. 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, 
fantastic loom usually in most cases, compass bezels with models like the SPB-121, you have the more traditional heritage models or the baby alpinist with the SPB-157 and other associated references. There's just a lot to like with these watches. They're no nonsense. They're also going to be watches that are going to be kind of those entry doors into the 70 hour power reserve 6R family of movements, the 6R35s, which are really being rolled out in a wide variety of watches from Seiko and watches all the way up to $2,000. So to get it for around $700 is compelling value. And we factor in all of this additional specifications associated with these watches, simply no brainers. And now for our final watch here, we have the Seiko Turtle Family. This is the watch design from a diving perspective that I think of first when thinking of Seiko. Now, many people might mention the SKX, but given that this is 2022, I don't wanna mention the SKX 7S26 movement uh, now being discontinued. I don't think that they are going to be the place to look as much as they were maybe five to 10 years ago. So just going to throw that out there. But in terms of the Turtle family, you look back at those 1960s iconic dive watches from Seiko, what is the perfect representation of that in a more affordable package? Uh, if you don't want something that's gonna be of the Seiko 5 sports family, you want true ISO 6425 compliance, great loom, just traditional professional dive watch standard that Seiko is associated with, you go with the Turtle. You look at something like the Patty version, the SRP E99, no nonsense, 4R series of movements, uh, 200 meters of water resistance, fantastic loom. Of course, maybe some of the uh, bezel alignment at times might be a little bit off, but hey, that's part of the charm of going with Seiko at the affordable end. And Seiko, in terms of its reappearance on this list over and over again, it's not by accident. The Turtle, as well as some of their other watches, are just simply no brainers when you're thinking about starting a collection. But all right, guys, that is my look at some of the definitive watches to start a collection with. For those that are maybe a little bit more seasoned, I'd love to see your take. What one would you recommend for somebody that was just getting started or what was the watch that got you started into watch collecting? Love to see comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that and does help out the channel. Also check out teddybaldester.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.